23 years ago, in the magazine Space India, brought out by ISRO, there was an article titled "Asking for the Moon." For a country which was relatively young, that is India, the a lunar exploration mission, which is expensive, was asking for too much. But fast forward to 23 years. Today we are expecting the successful landing, soft landing of the Chandrayaan-3 mission on the moon by August 23rd or 24th. Before starting the discussion on Chandrayaan-3, let's consider India's history with lunar exploration, which began in 2008 with Chandrayaan-1. Chandrayaan-1 was launched in October 2008 aboard PSLV C11, and the objective was to set up a 3D map of both the far side and the near side of the moon. Chandrayaan One was a relatively successful mission with finding the signatures of water and hydroxyl ions on the lunar surface. After eleven years, we continued with the Chandrayaan Two mission, which had a lander, an orbiter, and a rover. But despite a successful launch of Chandrayaan Two, the landing, the soft landing, which was planned, failed to take place because of a crash landing that happened. Despite this. The orbiter, which was set in motion by Chandrayaan-2, is still being used by the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Now let's discuss about Chandrayaan-3. The Chandrayaan-3 mission will re-attempt the soft landing of the lander, and the South Pole landing is especially crucial for this mission because it is the first time that a country is looking to soft land into the South Pole of the Moon. All previous missions by other countries has been mostly in the equatorial regions because of the relatively hospitable terrain of the equatorial regions, and also the ambient temperature, which allows the functioning of instruments in the equatorial region of the moon. The South Pole is also infamous for the presence of deep craters, which does not have any access to sunlight, called the permanently shadowed regions. The mission was launched by the GSLV Mark III's LVM-3 variant of launch vehicle, and it consists of a lander and a rover. This is because the orbiter, which has already been set in place by Chandrayaan-2, will provide feedback for the mission. Now let's look at the different payloads about the mission. The payloads are existing in the propulsion module, the lander, and the rover, and we'll look at these in detail. The lander would consist of four payloads: one to measure the thermal properties of the lunar soil, another to measure the near-surface plasma, and another to measure the seismic activity on the lunar surface. There will also be a payload by NASA, which will look into the dynamics of the moon. The rover will consist of two payloads, which will look at the mineralogical and elemental composition of the lunar surface. There will also be a payload on the propulsion module to measure the different properties of the lunar surface as well as the moon as a whole. Now, despite the failure of Chandrayaan two, we are expecting Chandrayaan three to be a success because of the certain measures that have been inbuilt into this mission to ensure that the crash landing does not take place. What are these mechanisms? Firstly, the legs of the lander have been made stronger to withhold the impact. Also, the solar panels, which only covered two sides of Chandrayaan two, have been made to cover the entire four sides in Chandrayaan three, so that this, even if the lander does not land in a proper position, it can still make use of the solar energy and work properly. There are also a lot more sensors built into the mission. Now, let's look at the other details of the launch. After the smooth launch, which was within the launch window, the the spacecraft, which is currently in orbit around the Earth, will be made to undergo several orbit tracing maneuvers. After which, there will be a lunar injection into the orbit of the Moon. This will be followed by orbit lowering maneuvers, and finally, it will reach a hundred kilometer orbit around the Moon. Post this, the lander will try to soft land around seventy degrees latitude near the south pole of the Moon. Now, what is important about the south pole of the Moon? First, it is unexplored, like we mentioned earlier, and also a lot of it has been in permanently frozen form, which means it is relatively well preserved. The presence of permanently shadowed regions and lunar polar volatiles can also indicate and give insights about the early solar system. Now we have to wait for the successful soft landing of the mission in the South Pole, and the 
time or the day in which the mission is to land that is 23rd or 24th august is also crucial for the mission to reach its objectives here's to hoping that not just chandrayaan 3 but all future missions for peaceful and utilitarian utilization of outer space is fruitful and successful thank you amrita ias academy